Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Solo King, a Korean 1v1 tournament for this broadcast here on Azuku TV. My name is Rapid and we're getting into our final best of three matchup of the night. It's Okyu, AD carry for Najin EM Fire facing off against Bengi. And of course the last time these two players faced off against each other is actually pretty recently. Um, remember back in game number, or day number one, of, uh, of champions. Uh, things started off, very first matchup was SKT versus Najin. I was like, alright, well how good is Najin? Turns out the answer is pretty good. In their first game, OQ I think went a combined 5-0 and 15 in game 1 and uh, put SKT behind game 1 and even though they would come back to win that best of 3 series, uh, we've seen a uh, kind of storied history between both of these teams and while their teams may be represented, it is just a 1v1. Okyu versus Bengi here. It'll be Annie versus Graves. Now, allowing Okyu on an 80 carry, probably not such a smart idea. However, with only three bands, you can't really stop that from happening. Uh, more importantly, Bengi's Annie. Um, how good is it? The jungle Annie, probably not something he has been practicing. Although, if you stack Molten Shield with that new Kindle Gem item, the, uh, the Cinder that's coming out, uh, who knows? Might be a, might be a viable strat. No, probably not. But if somebody sends somebody uh, sends me a video of them doing it, I, I don't know. That'll be pretty cool uh, to watch. For now, Bengi, kind of the last hope for SK Telecom T1 here in the Solo King. If I am not mistaken, I very rarely am. Uh, let me make sure to check and see whether or not that is actually the last surviving member of uh, Solo King for uh, SKT. I'll check it. We'll be right back after we get into game number one. It's Bengi versus OQ. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Solo King. Our last best of three of the night as OQ. Representing the Najin EM Fire Organization, taking on SK Telecom T1's Bengi. Of course, my name is Rapid, and we're getting into our first game of this, what could be a best of three, going all the way. Of course, it is a best of three. But of course, game three, if it makes it that far, will be blind picks, so a lot of excitement behind this now. SKT, a very, very popular team in, uh, in Champions. And so you'd expect most of the votes to go their way, but when a vote goes against them, you know that it's for a pretty good reason. And while some of Bengi's performances this season have seemed somewhat lackluster, it has been Okyu, who, when the rest of his team's kind of fallen apart, just steps up and, well, takes names. He's had an incredibly outstanding season. And I uh, recall hearing uh, Monty and Doe actually refer to him as one of, if not the top 80 carry in Korea right now. So uh, that's pretty high praise, even just to be included in that group. OQ on Graves now, uh, an 80 carry, which he's probably pretty, pretty well practiced yeah, on. Uh, has played that, uh, I believe, more than any other AD. Let me actually check those stats here really quickly. I believe I wrote them down somewhere along the lines. No, most played is Tristana. Has actually no Graves games this season, if these stats are correct. So, this would be uh, maybe not a champion that he plays exclusively, but uh, as far as his participation here in the Solo King goes, it will actually be pretty interesting to see how he fares, at least on... Uh, that champion specifically. Now, as far as the 1v1 matchup goes, Graves has not been a champion that OQ has played this season. He's played Misfortune twice, Callista and Lucian. But of course, he's going up against Bangi, who has played an Annie. And of course, with both players coming into this matchup undefeated, having yet to drop a game, so be the first loss for one of them here in game number one of this best of three. So uh, Bengi doing a decent job keeping the CS off of his turret, but nothing pushes quite as quickly as the Graves. Maybe Lucian, maybe Caitlyn up in that same category. But when it comes to putting out damage, Bengi is going to have burst that Oki may just not be able to deal with. Off the first recall back to base, um, I don't know, it's going to be very, very difficult for him to stay alive. Uh, specifically with Flash being run as the secondary summoner spell along with Teleport. 
Bengi is just going to be able to get that Flash Tibber stunned. And Oku is either going to have to give him a very, very wide berth. Maybe pick up 500 gold worth of Null Magic Mantle? Probably not. Uh, but you get the idea. Bengi risks losing that cannon minion. Did actually manage to CS it in the end. But should be a fairly difficult uh, lane matchup for Bengi to win. It does have comparable auto attack range, so you should be able to at least trade out with those. But every time you auto attack is any, unless you're far enough off the creep wave, you actually aggro it and, oh, missed that fireball. So he loses a lot of mana and doesn't get the uh, reduced pool down. Needs a buckshot behind the turret and honestly is going to miss more CS on that wave than he has on any other so far. Starting to climb there. OQ, you can tell he's not actually really playing versus Bengi. He's just shoving this wave in over and over again. And it's kind of all Bengi can do to just CS it. I mean, when you're a jungler, you kind of uh, you know hold these truths to be self-evident. That the minions don't go anywhere. They don't kill each other. They just stick around in the jungle. Uh, so Bengi, last hitting mechanics. Gonna put on trial here. We'll see how well they hold up. Versus OQ, who you can probably guarantee has some pretty good last hitting skills. As the AD carry for Najin. The uh, invent vote actually pretty close between both of these players, so it's uh, kind of well balanced, I would say, as far as the champion. Whoa! Flashing through the turret! What was that? OQ! Hits the go button, and let's watch this again in slow motion. Bengi walks just a little bit too far forward, and Oki is just like, listen, son, this is my lane. Get out of here. Last auto attack lands, and Oki with an impressive all-in underneath the turret from downtown game one will go his way over Bengi. Man, I, I don't have too many words. To describe what just happened there. That last auto attack following Bengi after he flashed is just the split second reflex difference. If, if Bengi had flashed before, Oki had had the opportunity to get that auto attack off. Oki might have actually died under a turret, so just a, a hair's breadth there between life and death and Oki. Coming out with a game one win, so in case you're wondering, the caliber of 80 carry OQ is. I think you just got a chance to see it there. Absolutely dominating. Game one victory. We'll have to see if Bengi can pull something back. Uh, over the course of Bengi's hitherto undefeated Solo King run, he's played four different champions, Urgot, Jarvan, Annie, and Nunu. I'm not saying any of those would have favored better versus OQ's Graves, but we'll see what Bengi decides to go for. Game number two. Should be coming up here in just a second, but honestly, I, both of these players are coming into this match on kind of opposite uh, opposite footings. Feedings? Footings. Yeah. Um, as far as their most recent performances, though, uh, I mean, SKT is coming off of their performance versus uh, versus Najin. Went all the way, went the, uh, the distance to all three games. And in game number two, when it was uh, when it was Najin trying to uh, trying to desperately pick up their victory, I was I was kind of pulling for Bengi on uh, on Nunu. He was playing that champion, but he went 0-7 that game. And uh, I'm not gonna say he cost his team the game, but he was not a very contributing uh, factor to their victory. But of course, in both of the other games. Like he actually did look pretty well. He went two and four in the last one, and of course in the first one that um, SKT did win, he put up a one two ten score. So nothing too out of the ordinary. Now, this is game number two, and for some reason we don't have champion bans, which is somewhat confusing to me, given the fact that usually you actually do ban champions. This is a normal game by the looks of it. Should've figured out a couple of things here. Uh, looks like they will be doing a small remake of the lobby. I would imagine so. Either that or we're gonna go check out ru runes and masteries. So 
We'll see what's going on there. Uh, looked like a Twitch versus Shen. Uh, we don't necessarily expect to see either one of those champions, but uh, we'll get a quick remake of the lobby and uh, and see what's going on there. Of course, in the meantime, I do want to let you guys know there is a um, there is a follow button right down below the stream. If you hit the follow button, then that will uh, notify you whenever Azubu TV goes live with uh, the Solo King, or of course any other tournaments that are being put on there. And of course, there's also a donation link right down below the stream. If you feel so inclined, you can also donate to. Uh, our charity, you can see the link right down there below the stream. It's Extra Life. Extra Life, of course, helping better the lives of children across the nation. If you feel inclined and have the means to donate, we'd certainly appreciate uh, your donation there. So just scroll right down below the screen, click on the Extra Life link, and find out more about how you can help. Of course, this is only the round of 12. Round of 6 will actually start tomorrow. So you don't want to miss that. This will be our next to last game of the day. I believe I incorrectly said it was the last game of the day. But we do have to settle the score between CJ Entis. Uh, they have Ambition facing off against Coco as the last game of the night. So it's going to be pretty exciting. You don't want to miss that. Of course, you don't want to miss this one either. Of course, here we go. This is a little bit more like it. Now, if you look at the bans for OQ, Faker's ban strategy is just ban the first three champions, let them pick whatever they want. OQ, he's got a little bit more research behind his picks. And if you, uh, you might be wondering what the three champions that Bengi played in this tournament were. Well, they were Annie, which OQ just won a game against. Urgot, Jarvan, and Nunu. All three of the bans there for OQ. Not letting Bengi on any of his comfort picks. It's going to be a Lucian. Locked in there for him. Lucian versus Callista. And every time we see a Callista picked here in the Solo King, it's sort of a statement being made by that player saying, I can beat you with half of your number of abilities. Because it's a 1v1, so there's no soulbound action going on between Callista and anyone else. Can't use his ultimate. Can't use... Uh, can't use her uh, Banshee passive to get that bonus damage down between AD carry and support auto attack. So half the abilities just don't work for OQ. But it turns out that Callista is still actually pretty good at winning the 1v1s. Ren and Pierce both comboing together along with that Martial Cadence to just kind of dash in and out between the minions. And uh, great CSing abilities too if you get the reset on Rend by killing a minion with it. It's a, it's a pretty good way to pick up a high CS score. Now, Lucian, kind of the all-star as far as 1v1 me bro, 80 carries. You walk into mid lane, you're looking to pick a fight. Of course, great at CSing as well, able to shove the lane, keep your opponent's CS down as well. So it'll be exciting to see how Bengi does, uh, kind of switching up from his jungle role. Playing Annie and now Lucian, hitting up the bottom lane a little bit. I don't know if, uh, maybe you need to call it Bang and Ask if his job's okay, if it's secure from the uh, from the Bangi AD carry. Not sure if we're quite on that uh, that level. Maybe Peekaboo is looking for uh, looking for some vacation time, and they want to put uh, put Bengi's Annie in there. I'm not sure about either one of those, but regardless, these are going to be your champion choices for this matchup. So for now, we're actually going to take a quick trip to see exactly how both of these players made it through, what their path through the Solo King was. Of course, both of them uh, undefeated. Before this matchup, let's go ahead and watch a, uh, watch a short video clip to find out how Bengi and Oku made it here to the round of 12. Oh, 
맞죠? 뭐 여기서 영으로 다듬어 들어갈 수 있는 거죠? 정답! 정답 생각해요 정답 아, 자살! 아, 어? 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 그렇죠. 이제 미니어를 타이죠. 어, 이거 이름 놀랬죠. 아, 서 있어요. 아, 아, 아. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Solo King, a 1v1 tournament broadcast here on Azubu TV. My name is Rapid, and I do want to welcome you to what could be the last game of this best of three series between Najin's OQ, their AD carry, facing off against SK Telecom T1's jungler, Bengi. Bengi down 0 1, losing his Annie game. Now, hopefully, on his Lucian game. Of course, he'll be playing AD carry versus. One of the best, if not the best, 80 carry in Korea. OQ picking Kalista and, of course, making the somewhat bold statement that, uh, yep. you know, maybe uh, good enough to win his lane matchup with half the number of skills. Of course, he's got plenty of spears there to throw out there, so maybe that's, uh, maybe that's gonna make the difference. Who are you? Bengi will be starting with a, uh... Wait a second, those are very different items. So, Bengi's gonna start the standard start, picking up health potions and a crystalline flask, whereas Okyu is bringing a cloth armor into the mix. And I'm a little bit confused as to where he's gonna get the attack damage that he needs to trade. But what's also confusing is that somehow he actually has like two or three extra AD, even though he didn't pick up any attack damage itemization either. Uh, also something to notice, no trinket purchased by OQ, so he will not be able to throw down a trinket ward, sweep anything out there. No scrying orbs, he is just looking to win his lane. So the trinket list starts. Uh, I'll never forget one of the very first uh, competitive League of Legends games that I cast between the old Curse lineup featured Cop uh, when he was there 80 carry. And uh, I'll never forget watching him walk out of base without, uh, without a trinket. I think he did it without items once too. That was uh, that was something to watch. And of course, the same situation, similar here for OQ. No trinket, not even necessary. OQ uh, minus one CS on farming that wave out, and still the potential for perfect CS. Whoa, almost walking underneath turret. That was very, very close. OQ playing this one close to his chest. Lane pushing into Bengi as uh, OQ continues to uh, shove it in there. Bengi getting off a little bit of harass, but does not want to aggro those minions this early on in the game. You can see, whoa, OQ. Let's have to watch out with that martial cadence. I promise you, if you've never played Callista before and you try to walk next to that turret and use that martial cadence, you will take turret shots. So 
It's a lot of finesse, and look at Bangy now, down to below 200 HP. Just off of a couple of rends, and a uh, good job there by Okio. You'll notice what he does is he'll stack up the rend on a minion, so that he can both stack those rend passives on a champion as well, pop the sacks, get the reset off of killing the minion, and then go in again for more damage. There's a Pierce now learned at level 3. Of course, it was learned at level 2. Uh, let's see what the itemization is. It's 2 points in Piercing Light, 1 in Relentless Pursuit there for Bengi. See what the skill order is here for OQ. Uh, should see more points in Rend. And yeah, 1 in Pierce, 2 in Rend. Want to make sure he can stack those stacks up and take them down, of course, as well. Oh, you definitely in the driver's seat. And one of the big differences here is that not only did Bengi pick a very high sustain way to start the game, OQ here is kind of innovating. He's saying, all right, let me pick another way to pick up some high sustain. Whoa, walking in there onto Bengi. Gonna keep walking forward. Unfortunately, he does not get the reset off of that rend. Will not be able to push forward for any more damage. Now, Bengi, when he goes back to base, he's actually going to be able to fill up that uh, Crystalline Flask, whereas OQ will not. All he'll have to his name is that Spear and a Cloth Armor. Spear, of course, not really doing anything for you. Whoa, Bengi, there's the Flash Forward and the Rend Passive. It's OQ taking down Bengi two games to zero. Get a quick replay on that for you. And oh my god, Bengi just a little bit too far forward. Walks to the side instead of walking backwards. Thinks he has an angle there. The flash forward. Last auto attack and the rend underneath the turret. It's OQ with a 2-0 victory over Bengi. And man, very, very dominant. Bengi uh, not really quite as comfortable in the lane as he was in the jungle. Goes down 0-2 to OQ, and to be honest, OQ on his 80 carries, not a matchup that you would necessarily expect Bengi to win. Now, uh, Bengi did lose both of the fan votes too, so I'm actually kind of interesting to, interested in uh, seeing the stats for fan votes and how accurate they are at actually predicting uh, the matchups. A lot of times I think it's just, you know, voting for who has the most fans, but sometimes it is actually... Who you think is going to win the 1v1? And of course, voting against OQ, kind of difficult when there are so many 80 carries in his arsenal. This season, OQ has played a total of six different 80 carries. We'll uh, have to watch out for him in the round of six.